In a previous video, we pitted the Creality K1, a less expensive fast 3D printer against the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, a much more expensive 3D printer that's meant for high speed. In the ultimate head-to-head -head high speed printing test where we tried to crank up the speeds as much as we could, and it did answer some questions, but also raised some questions as well in the comments section. For example, if we take a high speed printer, which is built specifically to run at high speeds, and we slow it way down, are we going to get any better results? And I don't really know the answer to that question, and I'm curious, and if you are curious too, stick around to find out. So if you have not already watched the previous video, I will make sure to link it up above there. Check that one out first and then come back and see the rest of this video as well. Some of the comments that came up from the previous video were that these results were absolutely terrible. They were atrocious, they looked horrible, and some other choice words as well. I didn't personally think the results were that bad, but I didn't do a good enough job giving some context about both the size of the parts because these are pretty small parts. And I didn't talk much about what I like to do in my videos to show the defects. So for example, I have extremely harsh lighting in my workshop. It's super bright LEDs coming from the top. I also spray paint my parts in order to show the defects a little bit better. And when I show the results in the video, I take high definition photos of those parts and I blow them up to be as big as I possibly can on the screens. And I guess one other point about these too is they are called torture tests for a reason. They're not supposed to be easy. It's really going to point out for us where the problems are and what exactly we need to dial in to get better results. So for the K1, we ran another sample for the stringing test and we were able to get a little bit better results in the last video. And I'm sure that I could get even better results if I tried to dial it in a little bit more. For high speed printing, the issues we run into typically are trying to cool that part fast enough. The layer below may not be cool enough before the next layer is deposited and you can run into some problems like the edges wanting to curl up. Now one of the other issues we run into with high speed printing is that the nozzle or hot end can't keep up with the demand. In the case of the Creality K1, we have a completely different setup than we have on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. This one has a ceramic heater which encircles the volcano style nozzle. So the capacity on this one probably is much higher than on this one. And the other feature of this one is that it has a brass nozzle as stock whereas this one has a hardened steel nozzle. So they're completely different setups. Probably in the last video, we were seeing more stringing because this printer was able to heat the material much more quickly. One of the other issues with high-speed printing versus slower printing is that we may not get as good layer adhesion. So if we're depositing the material too quickly, it's not gonna bond properly to that previous layer. Aside from the obvious problem in slow speed printing, taking so long to finish that we don't wanna wait for it, the other problem that we run into typically is that if we're traveling in slow speed from one island or one part to another one, a little bit of material can ooze out of the nozzle and be deposited on the outside wall of that next part. And that can show up as a defect and it can show up all over your part depending on where the travels are. I've just finished drawing the filament. This is the exact same filament that I used in the previous test video. And I've also gone ahead and applied glue stick to both build plates. And all we have left to do is start the prints. These are gonna be both slow prints first. Outer wall is gonna be 60 millimeters per second, inner wall 100, and infill is gonna be 200. Print number one is finished, print number two is finished. I'm gonna get these off of the build plate, get everything cleaned back up again, and then we'll start running the next test.
These ones will just take a little bit more than two hours to finish and it's pretty late at night right now so I'm going to let these go and we'll come back in the morning and see how they look. All right, we have those two samples completed. Go ahead and take these off and then reprep them and do one last sample for each. And that's just gonna be at the regular speed for both of these printers. We finished the final torture test for both printers and we're going to get the build plates prepped again because I wanted to run one more test for each printer. And that test is going to be kind of like a flow calibration test where we increase the speed as we rise up towards the top. The test that I'm going to run is a little bit more representative of a 3D print that you or I would make. It's going to have infill, outer walls and inner walls as well. No tops and no bottoms. So for the X1C, I just upped the nozzle temperature from 220 to 240. Hopefully that allows us to finish this print. Once again, I upped the nozzle temperature. It's starting to have some trouble again because of course I'm raising the speeds up. So I'm up to 255. Seems to have helped a little bit. The Creality printer is still running at 220, although I think it could use a little up. 30. I ran out of filament just at the very end. Look, two minutes left. Okay, the results are in, but before we get to those results, make sure that if you have not already subscribed, please subscribe to this channel and give the video a thumbs up. And if you have any comments, any video suggestions, any ideas, make sure you put them in the comment section below. I do read every single comment and I try and respond to every comment as well, whether it be somebody trying to troll me or something actually legitimate. Well, I kind of wish I could go back in time a little bit because I would have just run these samples first. Instead, I wasted a whole bunch of time and filament in running these torture tests that we could have answered with these. But there is some information we can get from these torture tests. So with regards to the Creality printer, the K1, from the slowest speed all the way up to the regular speed of printing, we're seeing nearly identical results. The overhangs are better than they were at high speed. When we got to the high speed test that I produced in the last video, the quality did suffer a little bit and I had to wonder whether it was something to do with the extruder on that printer. So I do have a new extruder on its way, but of course I don't have it installed. So if I get some new results on the high speed test, I'll make sure to put that in the description below. As for the bamboo printer, it is a little bit different. I found that on the slowest speed, the bridging was slightly better, not much, just ever so slightly better. But all of the samples with the bamboo right up to the high speed that I produced in the last video were pretty much the same. The overhangs were pretty much the same, maybe just slightly better on the slower speed, but not much at all. And again, I have to wonder because of the automatic filament calibration on this printer, whether it's slightly over extruding because in this pillar area here, I have a few bumps and they're consistent no matter which sample I'm running. And that goes for the sample that I ran in the last video as well. So I ran this filament, which is a really nice red sparkle filament. And I have the exact same bumps in there as well. So finally, we can get some answers with these samples. They don't look like much, but it was actually really helpful. At really slow speeds, there is, for the bamboo and for the Creality, some artifacting, they're vertical lines coming up. 
and they seem fairly consistent. And I have to wonder whether they are related to the belt or the motors or a combination of those. As we go up in speed, one or two speeds, those pretty well go away. That goes for both printers. I would say overall, the bamboo is a little bit smoother in the outer wall extrusion than the Creality. It's not far off. And the Creality on the slower speed had a few more of those vertical lines on it than the bamboo did. So to me, what it looks like is if you run these printers at a really slow speed, you are gonna see some artifacting. They're not really built for that. So there is obviously something going on. And if you know, by the way, please let me know in the comment section. But as you go up in speed, there really isn't much of a difference whether you're running at a fairly slow speed all the way up to the highest speed of these printers. It seems like the quality is about the same. Yes, I wasted a whole bunch of time just to say that these printers run really well at the speed that they're supposed to run well at. But the main point is, it doesn't look like you're going to be getting better results from these printers if you run them a little bit slower. You may have some areas like a bridged area or an overhang because of cooling that might be a little bit better, but they're really not far off. It's almost not worth it. So I'm interested to hear from you. If you have experience on this subject, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think a slower print is better? Do you think a faster print is better? Or just to keep everything as stock? And thanks once again to all my patrons for helping to support the channel. I really appreciate it. Take care, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.